Hey, hey, Laura J here today with an important message, not just about mental health, but about emotional health. I've had a few messages from people who are struggling with family members who are either suicidal, violent, or in a bad way, some way. And I wanna say that I have been to some incredibly low spaces myself and had to crawl out of those and walk through all of the shadows of denial that I had previously tried to walk away from and then had to face backwards and walk backwards through. And what I propose is that that is what we must all do until we are actually willing to face the truth of who and whose we are and who we have given our power to either responsibly or reactively and how that is serving us. Because what we must now face is the fact that there is a direct attack on our wills taking place. Where there is a will, there is a way. And right now what we have seen at play is the collective denial of free will for the sake of a group will. Well, when you join a group, in order to belong, you have to sacrifice some of your individualism or individuality. That is where our free will lies. It is our ability to choose. Because if we sacrifice our free will for the sake of the group will, that is the equivalent, as I often reference, of the knight or the man who becomes a knight who is then tied to a king or queen that has knighted them to give them a status that makes them feel as if they are more than they were as a man or woman. But the truth is that the man who becomes a knight is still a man under the suit, which is a status title or personage that has converted the original into an aboriginal. And I don't mean that in any disrespect to alternatives alternatives, alternatives that are being offered and that we have come to believe to be what we see ourselves to be, such as an aboriginal. Ab means from or away, the original. So it is literally moving the original into a different understanding of themselves because this whole psyop is about our identity. It is about our self image. And are we going to be the I mage? that is actually able to bring forward that which we have on our hearts to desire, which desire is of, give birth to. So what we give birth to from our heart's magnetic field that brings into manifestation, that festation which was in our hearts because of the inner mind that allowed us to use the divine calling on our hearts to take action inspired action. That is what the law of attraction requires us to see that the six most important letters are action, in fact. So instead of moving away from the original, we have to get back to the original, get back to being the original. And then with that, in that trek from here to here, we have to see how much denial we must walk through in order to get there. And it will be uncomfortable. It will be feel dangerous. It will not be trustworthy because we didn't trust ourselves when we made that shift in the first place and started trusting someone else's knowledge to replace what we felt to be true. And now we don't know what to do because we were told this wasn't enough as the original was and had to become an aboriginal in order to gain a status card to play a better game. Well, it's all BS, belief systems we have bought into. And the problem is that when we have put our self image into being part of a collective at the expense of the individual, we lose free will and free will is being attacked. It's why there are mandates that tell us to act against what is actually good for us. There is an unhealthy agenda, many of them at play right now that our free will would allow us to say, mm, I may pay a price now, but I will not live with the consequences of going with the flow 
to the edge of the river to where the waterfall leads over an edge that I cannot recover from as easily as when I stand now and say no. So please recognize if you or one of your loved ones or friends, which are loved ones, are going through a difficult time, the more that we have denied, the more darkness we have to walk back through in order to find who and whose we always have been, always will be, underneath of all of the illusions. Don Miguel Ruaz in the Four Agreements calls it the Motote, which is essentially the grand illusion that we have bought into, that we believed to be the truth, just like Plato talked about in the allegory of the cave. In the allegory of the cave, people are chained to a wall and they see shadows dancing on the walls in front of them by fire behind them that is controlled by ones that are not chained. And then they believe that the figures that are shown on the walls from the fire behind where they are chained is reality when the one then that releases themselves, frees themselves and leaves the cave to then find the truth and comes back to tell those who are still chained the truth and the fact that that's not reality at all. It's just a reflection of that which they cannot see behind them. That's when either they get attacked, ostracized, outcast, or the ones that have been believing BS that is not true for so long they go through the uncomfortable cognitive dissonance of walking backwards through all of the denials and didn't even know I am lying. So I hope that together we can collectively hold space for one another in a new way without words and prescripts being what we offer one another because the truth is that these words are sacred swords. They are the power of the spoken word is the spoken sword, the sword, spoken word, sacred word. It is how we write the life sentences. Do we understand you go to jail for a life sentence? Well, whether you're in jail or whether you're walking free and you believe yourself to be less than because you don't have a certain suit that makes you feel like you can rise in status or give you more income, in come let me invite that which is not in my best interest in so that i can trade my soul in exchange for some monetary funds that are based in fiat currency which is backed by nothing but our trust or let us say we can have an equal exchange by bartering our services with fellow men and women rather than men and women that have been converted to something less in the name of making them more and that is more BS that I offer you to say, hey, look, you may have been looking at all of those figures dancing on the cave wall and thought them to be true, but the reality is who and whose you are is the most important thing. It is the war that is being fought for in this thought war for your consciousness. When the con was sent, did you accept? That's what consent is. The con is being sent for your consciousness. Are you going to accept or are you going to say no? Lawfully, you can do so without needing to get a lawyer, which is just a man or woman in a suit involved because that brings in a third party, which is an entity, which is not actually involved in the matter. And that is what empowers the legal fiction that legal and lawful are different. If we lawfully act, and we put a man or a woman on notice. In fact, that is the most powerful way forward because only those with firsthand testimony, which is what an affidavit in the legal world would be, except for when we offer a testimony, we don't swear it to be true because we don't need to curse ourselves or anyone else in order to speak the truth and stand on it. We make claims lawfully and then we stand on those claims and we say, it is the truth so far as what I know it to be. And I affirm and testify that and will in any court of law, not just the legal realm, but the ones that we must take back and say, God damn it, as men and women, we must damn the flow. God damn it. What is a damn? 
block the flow of that which we say no more is that okay and instead we're going to go a new way we're going to walk this path as men and women freely not the free lie that so many have bought into and sold their souls to belong to in order to climb the ladder and step on others in order to rise when things change and that ladder no longer exists and you stepped on everybody in order to get to the top, how are you gonna fare? Not very well. We need to stop doing what we've always done so that we can actually get what we've never got before, which is inner peace. You can't get it from this outside world, but certainly we can find it together. We can mine it from the inside and then call our power back into the presence of the heart which is where we can start to manifest that which we desire to experience collectively together together for that is what we are called to do now in compassion connection compounded passion connection compounded passion calm passion all of these words if we break them down and we put new meanings to them when we start to understand the need to know our terms and definitions of that which we use the words of, then that is when we take back the power of the spoken word, of the sacred word, and make that the sword that sets us free instead of keeps us in captivity. That's all I got for today. Lord J. Namaste. Namaga.